If there is one piece of equipment that most aviation enthusiasts dream of, it would be a long-range jetpack. The jetpack has remained in our collective consciousness for nearly a century, be it in the form of a wearable backpack or an exoskeleton suit, as shown in the movie Iron Man. So, where do we stand today after intermittent but decades-long research in jetpack technology and above all, how far are we in developing a practical electric jetpack? We will explore these topics in this video, so let's begin. People were introduced to the concept of jetpack as early as 1928 through the character of Buck Rogers. Generations later, kids growing up in the 80s saw Exoframe attached to a flying system that was worn by Ace McLeod from the animated TV series The Centurions. In more recent times, we have the Falcon and the Iron Man characters that use this contraption. The jetpack has been such an integral part of science fiction that it is shown to be an essential piece of equipment for almost anyone from the future. It can be safely said that no aircraft can give a flight experience like the jetpack. It makes us fly as we imagine we would fly if we had superpowers. In recent times, there are three jetpacks that have been somewhat successful in demonstrating flights that have practical value. These include the Jetsuit by Gravity Industries, the JB-10 by Jetpack Aviation, and the Jetwing by Jetman. All three use micro-turbojets, which is a class of air-breathing jet engines that produce up to 100 kilograms of thrust. There is also the flyboard developed by Frankie Zapata that works on the same technology. The only difference is that the turbojets are mounted on a board that stays underneath the pilot's feet. All the mentioned jetpacks are robust and safe. In fact, one can get lessons for flying the jetpack, which are offered by both Gravity Industries and Jetpack Aviation. The applications for the jetpack can be numerous. They could be used in hot military zones for evacuation or deployment of personnel. They could be used for getting people out of emergencies such as fires. They could be used for last mile logistics or be used by paramedics and first responders to quickly get to hard to reach mountainous areas or disaster zones. If we look into the past, we find that the first jetpacks were based on rocket propulsion. That is, propellant was ignited and its exhaust was pushed through a converging diverging nozzle. The pack based on this technology, such as the Bell rocket belt, was developed in 1961 and used hydrogen peroxide propellant that lasted for a matter of seconds. The maximum flight time of 33 seconds was recorded for packs based on rocket propulsion method. It was then felt that to increase the flying time, more efficient means of propulsion needs to be explored, which led to the development of jetpacks with turbojets. This second generation of jetpacks that used kerosene as fuel was funded by the military. The challenge at the time was to produce a jet engine that was small enough to fit on a person's back. Higher efficiency of the turbojet increased the flight from the order of seconds to minutes. The first free flight of the turbo jet pack, or the jet belt as it was called, was carried out in April 1969, three months before the first lunar landing. The jet belt demonstrated flight times of over 5 minutes and could theoretically fly up to 25 minutes with a speed of up to 85 miles per hour. The long flight time came from the higher efficiency of the turbojet and not to mention its relatively larger size. The exhaust from the jet was evenly split into two channels to distribute the thrust which was more efficient than using two smaller turbojets. Despite impressing the military, the project was still dropped. The reasons were the risk of heavy landing with added weight of the jet belt acting on the pilot's leg and also the single point of failure that was the turbojet. To address the issues, the cleverly designed Bell Pogo was developed. Unfortunately, that design too was put on the back burner. In the following decades, jetpacks were consigned to making spectacular public demonstrations in mega events such as in Los Angeles Summer Olympics in 1984. Meanwhile, the micro-turbojet technology was picked up by the private sector to cater for the demand by hobbyists that were interested in using them for making small radio-controlled model aircraft. 
As the micro turbine jets became widely available, many individuals started developing their own jetpacks. The jetpack developed by Richard Browning of Gravity Industries went through several iterations before achieving its final form. He initially had two turbojets attached on the legs and two on his arms. It was soon realized that it is extremely difficult to control all four limbs at the same time in flight and therefore he took the leg thrusters and added them to his existing arm thrusters. He also added a large turbojet at the back which significantly improved his flying time. It is reported that gravity jet suit now achieves a flight time of 5 to 10 minutes depending upon the weight of the pilot. As it stands, the fundamental limitation of the jetpacks is the low flight times. To achieve longer flight times and to cover more distance, wings must be added to the suit. Based on this principle, Yves Rossi developed the jet wing. The jet wing has covered 21 miles in 13 minutes of flight time. In most of his flights, Rossi is dropped from a helicopter so he already has some altitude to begin with. But his jet suit is also capable of vertically taking off on its own and transitioning to cruise. The benefits of having wings aren't limited to just fixed wings. Even with a wingsuit, the performance of the jetpack can be increased significantly. For example, Richard Browning was able to smash his record of fastest travel in a jetpack of 32 miles per hour to an astounding 85 miles per hour by using a wingsuit. It should be mentioned here that the fixed wing performs much better. The jet wing can achieve a much higher speed of 160 miles per hour. Now let's have a look at some developments on the electric jetpacks. We've already learned that the high power requirements are the bane of progress on this front. Interestingly, the Iron Man suit from the comics is electrically propelled. The high amount of power required is supplied by the fictional arc reactor. If we were to have such a power source, then by using ionic propulsion, electricity could have been converted into propulsion energy. Sadly, we don't live in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and are bound by the limited battery energy. Nonetheless, the easy availability of electric ducted fans of high thrust capability has provided some impetus to move forward in this area. The US-based organization Electric Jet Aircraft has developed the EJ-1S which uses 16 EDFs in a square frame. The flight data isn't available, but the specifications say that it has a battery weighing 23.5 kilograms, while the entire pack weighs around 45 kilograms. Unlike the turbojet, this pack wouldn't get any lighter as there isn't any fuel to burn. And therefore, landing with the extra 45 kilograms of weight would remain an issue unless kids are attached to the pack to absorb the impact during landing. It has to be mentioned here that instead of using several small propulsors, fewer larger propulsors reduce the required power drastically. Perhaps with this factor in mind, the copter pack in Australia was developed. It features two ducted fans with almost a meter long propeller diameter. As per their website and contrary to what their video shows, so far it has carried out tethered flights successfully. The copter pack also features automatic flight stabilization, something that is easier to achieve in an electric driven pack rather than a fuel fired pack. Based on the same principle of using larger propulsors to reduce power, Gravity Industries have also developed an electric jet pack. Despite the use of large electric ducted fans with the current battery limitations, this pack cannot fly for more than 15 seconds. Finally, the last one worth mentioning here is the electrified wingsuit developed by Austria's Peter Zaltzman in collaboration with BMW. It is a wingsuit with two small propellers, each of around 13 cm diameter, mounted on the breastplate. The two carbon impellers in the lightweight carbon fiber and aluminium structure have a combined output of 15 kilowatts. The lithium ion battery pack of around 12 kilograms is also attached to this unit. During a jump, it was seen that the thrust from the impellers helped Peter Zaltzman to regain altitude. The battery on the electrified wingsuit is only enough to last for five minutes. 
While today, jetpacks aren't as widespread as people would have envisaged 50 years ago, recent activity is encouraging. So, what are your favorite jetpacks from science fiction or real life? Do let me know in the comment section. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from the video, then please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.